in racing it's all about the drive the desire within for one to be quickest a team's ability to make a machine perform better than any other week after week in the arca remax series there is no shortage of drive frank kimmel has driven to a record eight series titles and still has the vigor to claim a ninth but rookie michael mcdowell is turning heads and driving like no other well, tonight be the night. He finally propels himself into victory lane for the first time. We're under the lights, live in Kentucky, right now. Welcome, everyone, to Sparta, Kentucky, for the WLWT Channel 5 150 from the Kentucky Speedway. It's round 13 for the ARCA Remax Series. Cars are all in line, about to go out onto the speedway as we get ready for the 13th race of the 2007 season. Hello, everyone. I'm Rick Allen alongside of Phil Parsons. Now, it almost looks as though a changing of the guard is taking place in the ARCA Remax Series with the field we have. So much incredible young talent here. And this is probably the best field I've ever seen assembled for an ARCA Remax race. We have so many young guys with cup backgrounds and cup uh, Affiliations. Affiliations. We've got Richard Childress Racing represented. We have Ganassi represented. Here's a list right here. You can see Bill Davis represented, Ray Evernham, Kevin Harvick, Michael Waltrip. The list goes on and on and on. Probably as fine a field as I've ever seen for an Arca Remax Series race. And right in the middle of that field, you see Erin Crocker from Evernham Motorsports. She really set a blistering pace earlier in qualifying. It's been a one-day show. We practiced earlier this morning than this afternoon. Out for qualifying, Erin Crocker goes out sets a new track record 178.731 miles an hour around this mile and a half track but not so fortunate was pete shepherd really wasn't pete was the fastest car in practice in his roush penway ford and unfortunately crashed on his qualifying attempt did not even get a time in and will not be able to start this race they had to spend about 30 minutes working on that wall before they were able to continue with the qualifying but once it was finished it was official aaron crocker wins the poll chief with ray dunlap well, thank you, Rick. The 98 car has been fast all day today here at Kentucky. As a matter of fact, when we come to this racetrack, you always assume that Aaron Crocker is going to be very good. Two times she's finished second right here at this particular racetrack. You've got that same race car that's been very good to you. So is tonight finally the night that you break through to victory lane? I certainly hope so. Uh, you know, it's been a great year. We've had some great finishes. It's our third pole here at Kentucky. And uh, I have a great group of guys at Everham Motorsports that have helped me. Uh, you know, a lot of the guys on my team move up since it's a part-time deal and people come in and out. But everyone's been really behind me. And I, I just want to win for them as much as I do for myself. You know, we're so close. And uh, I don't want to jinx myself. But I'm looking forward to tonight, and I hope it goes well. Okay, we well, look forward to it, too, and wish you good luck. That's Erin Crocker. She's on the pole. And, guys, remember, no female has ever won in the ARCA. Remax series. Rick? Well, thank you, Ray. We take a look at what took place a week ago in the ARCA Remax series. We get you up to speed. And two guys racing side by side at the end of this race in Berlin, Phil. Yeah, great pit strategy by Brian Keselowski and his team. He put tires on late. Michael McDowell looked like he may be headed to win number one. He got beat by fresh tires. Good pit strategy. Brian Keselowski wins for the second year in a row at Berlin. An impressive top five here. You see James Busher's name on there finishing in third. He won that race earlier in Lakeland, Florida. So a lot of young talent working its way up here in the ARCA Remax Series. We take a look at the point standings after 12 races. Kimmel and Gerhardt back one and two in this 2007 season. Michael McDowell has vaulted himself up into the third position. And he is standing by with Jim Trado. And guys, he jumped two spots because he had a second runner-up finish of the season. But Micah McDowell, you've got a lot of cars around you, a lot of NASCAR influences. How bad do you want your first win, especially with the company you're keeping? Yeah, no, for us to come out here into Z-Line Design, Eddie Sharp Racing uh, Dodge this weekend and uh, qualify on the front row is an awesome accomplishment with all the great teams here. But, uh, you know, we've been on the front row a lot this year, and we got five poles, and, and we're looking for our race win. We've been so close. Last weekend, we were 10 laps away from it. So hopefully we can pull it off with the, uh, the big teams and, and show what we got. Guys, he wants to be the next NASCAR development driver we talk about. He's led the most laps of the season. Tonight might be the night he seals the deal. Thank you, Jim. A lot of talent there in Michael McDowell. Thank now, you've you, seen sir. a lot of racers out there. How would you rate Michael McDowell against a lot of the young talent moving up in this racing series? I've been very impressed. He's won, run some great races on speedways and short tracks. Very versatile. Comes from a road racing background, but has proved that he can get it done on the ovals, too. Ken Schrader, you've raced against Michael McDowell. What do you think about the kid? I got to race against him a couple times already this year, and he's he's done an awesome job. But I got to say that, you know, all those newcomers out there, I like when you look at the war, keeping 
keeping count of the war for right. the year standings. Got a couple of those old guys up there still. <laughs> well, everyone, the veterans as well as the rookies trying to duel it here in Kentucky Speedway. The summer is just heating up, and we're about to get underway at Kentucky Speedway. This 13th race of the 2007 season, all of the cars in line and waiting to go out onto the racetrack as we take a look at our race recap analysis here. The length of the race, 150 miles, 100 laps, Phil. Yeah, the pit window is about 60 to 65 laps, so this may take a one pit stop strategy. As you can see, the race record is a little bit over 120 miles an hour, 121 miles an hour, set by Chad Blunt a few years ago. Let's go down to Jim Trado. I think you've got a young man you'd like to talk about. Landon Castle is a name that you may know out of Iowa. He ran a lot of late models, and he was a sign in December that Hendrick said, we need to start a development program up again. Castle signed with Hendrick Motorsports, tested Jeff Gordon's car Lakeland, Florida soon after, and has been testing with Hendrick Motorsports since with the R&D team. He turned 18 as uh, I was recently as a week ago. He now is in this Arca Remax Series field. This is the same team, the R&D team, along with some of the same guys he's been working with on their Cup and Bush development that he's been working with tonight. He's also going to have the help of his friends, his mom and dad are here. This kid has a bright, bright future with Hendrick Motorsports. Let's go down a little bit further down the grid from my A starting spot to Ray Dunlap. Well, thank you, Jim. Let's talk about 13th. Today is Friday the 13th, and it is the 13th race of the season. So who's in the 13th starting position? Justin South, the driver of the HD Supply Dodge Charger. Now, Justin South had a career best second place in his very first start at the Salem Speedway back in 2004. This year, he's already had a third place, and tonight, he believes he's got a car good enough to get his first ever win in the ARCA Remax Series. Rick? Well, thank you, Jim and Ray. Again, Landon starting in the 13th spot. Third starting position is the average that the winners have been able to find victory lane. The farthest back anyone has started to win this race, Frank Kimmel. Back in 05, he started 17. We'll find out where the starter starts to win this race. <laughs> Under the lights at Kentucky Speedway for race number 13 of the 2007 season, we see the cars rolling around the racetrack. And let's take a look at the ARCA Remax Series starting grid. Again, on the pole for the fifth or fifth career pole is Aaron Crocker. That sets a record for females in the ARCA Remax Series as far as number of poles. Yeah, she was tied with uh, Patty Moise, absolutely, yeah, with four. Jeremy Clements will start in the second row. A couple young guys, Brian Silas, Josh Wise, make up row number three. There yeah, are a lot of young guys in this field. And this is a great race track, Kenny. This is the first time you've ever been here, which is pretty surprising. You tested a little bit here in the past, but first time you're ever going to run a race, and you just came off this racetrack not 30 minutes ago. Just came off the racetrack with the uh, little fast and all Dodge truck for getting ready for tomorrow night's race. And it is a wonderful track, nice and wide. Uh, kind of preferred groove at the bottom right now, but uh, as we've seen here in the past, the groove widens up as the race goes on, and it ought to be an awesome market race. They've had some good shows here. And this track has a little bit of character. There's some bumps. I mean, it's not ultra smooth like some of the other racetracks, so there's some places where you can maybe make up some time. There's some bumps. Uh, I think the front straightaway uh, is probably the bumpiest part. The turns, uh, they've worked on them some. They're ground down. They're, they're, they're pretty smooth, but uh, nice wide racetrack. They're pretty flat getting into three, and then you pick up the banking. The banking falls away from you coming off turn two. There are over 50 cars trying to make this race. Here's who did not qualify and did not make it. On the bottom of that list, you see Pete Shepard. He was fastest in practice and then had the problem in qualifying. Did not make it into this field. 
We'll ride along with a few different cars, one of those being Philip Magilton in the number 47. He'll start in the 34th position. We'll see if Philip can make his way up toward the front. We'll ride along with him. We're also going to ride in the number 59 of Justin South, the HD Supply and Building Materials Dodge. He'll be starting back in the 27th position. Justin South, another one of those young drivers trying to make a name for himself in the ARCA Remax series. We'll also ride along in the well, eight time series champions car, Frank Kimmel. He will start in the 10th position. Again, he's won from 17 back. He's actually won this race four times. And a terrific starting spot for Brian Silas in the number 11, North Tracks, Holland Pump Four, starting fifth. Great start here at Kentucky for Brian Silas. Again, the sun setting on this racetrack. We will be under the lights. It's scheduled to go 100 laps, 150 miles. Again, we think that the pit window is going to be around 60 to 65 laps, so they could make it on one pit stop. Let's go down trackside for one final time for Ray Dunlap. Well, thank you, Rick. You know, pit crews could certainly be a big factor. Even if there's one pit stop, they're always a big part of racing. And tonight, the number 31 car of Alec Johns does not have a regular crew here tonight, so they are using the Craftsman Truck Series crew from Matt Crafton's group. So these guys will be going over the wall to pit the number 31. He starts eighth tonight. That's Alec Johns. Jim? Ray, I checked in with an ARCA Remax Series full-timer who's going to stay with his full-time crew, and that's Dexter Bean, who's top five in points right now in the sixth car, the five-star Telecom Chevy. They're confident in their setup. They're also confident in their strategy that happened last time here at Kentucky. They pitted early before anybody else did. They found themselves in the top five run. They had a tire cut down with 10 to go. So their strategy with a wink is we're going to do that again. Come in early, perhaps make a two-stop race, but get in before everybody else does and get out cleanly on pit road. You know, this is a big night for Alex Jones, obviously running this Arca Remax Series race here in Kentucky. It's also his 21st birthday today. This is a big night for every one of those competitors when you're in a speedway like this. Bill Kimball also celebrating a birthday today. So, happy birthday, 5 0. Man. The green flag flies were underway in Kentucky. Erin Crocker again on the pole on her outside, making the move early on. Michael McDowell is going to try to take the lead as they go down the back stretch. Aaron's going to fight back on the inside of Michael McDowell. Michael held that car wide open through one and two. It's a lot easier to go through one and two wide open on the outside that first lap before you're up to speed. And he gets a little bit high through three and four. And so Aaron. Trouble Parker, already. Philip McJilton were riding along with him. And a few other cars involved in it. The first lap, the caution comes out. And about five cars involved in this one. There's Justin Marks, the 65, hard, hard contact. He had to go to the very back of the pack for the start because of unapproved changes. Also, Gerhardt involved in this in the number five. Is that Justin Algar? Justin, like Algar in the 16. Oh, boy. Top five point man coming into this race. Going to be a serious blow to this point situation. There's Bobby Gerhardt. He's got a lot of damage to the left front and a little bit to the right rear. Bobby started 14th, so be curious to see where, where this all activity started here. Yeah, Justin Mark started all the way at the back of the pack, so. Uh, Again, we've got the 65, the 5, the 16, and the 47 all involved in this first lap incident. See the five of Bobby Gerhardt and the 47 of Philip Magilton get together. There's Patrick Shelter getting turned around. There's Justin Allgaier making some hard contact with the outside wall. Frank Kephammer was involved. There's Justin Marks up against the outside wall. There's right. another view. Riding along with Philip Magilton. Sun somewhat in their eyes there. Looked like he got loose maybe a little bit on the inside, Kenny. That was Patrick, right? Patrick Shelter. That was Patrick Shelter. Looks like he might have had loose. And then whenever that happens, you got to chase the car up the hill. And when someone's on the outside of you, then you got two of you in trouble. We see the five on pit road now. They're going to have to do some work to that car. Again, second in the points is Bobby Gerhardt as he brings the car onto pit road for his crew to go to work on that car. Going to change tires and have to do a little bit of body work to the left side of that car before they send it back out. We'll be right back with more from Kentucky Speedway under caution for the first time. <laughs> 